Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a workflow diagram using LibreOffice Draw. So, sometimes when I'm working on complex web projects, or it doesn't really matter what type of project you're working on, you may want to create a workflow diagram. So that could be for an event, it could be for some sort of a project that you're working on, and you want to see your project in a holistic view. So, so I normally do this when I'm creating something new, a new type of piece of software, or I've got a complex project to work on. I need to understand how information and how customs may flow through a particular project. So let's open up LibreOffice Draw. If you don't have LibreOffice installed on your computer, I'll put a link in the YouTube description showing you how to download and install LibreOffice. I use this quite often. Uh, sometimes I use Microsoft Office, but with diagrams and stuff, I prefer to use LibreOffice Draw. So, up here you've got the toolbar, and here you've got like almost like a page. Consider it to be a blank page. Let's go to File Save As first. This is what I normally would do: File Save As, and we'll go to my desktop, and we'll create this. Let's just call it a Workflow Diagram Dash Zero One. So let's save this work. So imagine if I wanted to um, create a workflow diagram for a website project that I'm working on. So let's do one mock-up example. We'll do this on the fly, right? So the first thing is um, we've got these various tools up here. I don't normally use most of these tools. The ones that I use are the shape tool. So insert a shape. And I want to insert a square rectangle, right? A rectangle shape. So I'll click on that. Let's click on it. And then we can just simply left-click and draw out this rectangle shape, something like this. And then I'll double click inside and I'll write in the word website. And normally I make that bold because I want it to stand out. That's kind of a main component, right? So this could be like uh, the name of an event that you're doing or something, something like that possibly, or another piece of software you're building. So to save time, normally what I do is just click on the actual um, rectangle inside here. So I'll click on it and then I'll press Control C to copy and then Control V to paste and then I drag it somewhere else and in this case I'm going to type in uh, website visitor so these will be people that are visiting the website and normally I want to distinguish those two elements so these are visitors so I'll click on it and then in the background color I'll change it to a different color let's just change it to like a yellow so visitors will be yellow and the main website will be this blue color now the website itself has elements coming off of it. So in this case, I'm going to demonstrate something like a, some sort of lead generation website. Yeah? Let's push this into the center. So when I create lead generation websites, we normally have the, have the website visitor uh, get to the website. Let's put that here. And then they'll go to something called uh, form processing so we want to send them to some type of form I'm going to click inside here select this text and unbold it these are like elements within the website thing itself right and visitors are separated so let's join a few things together I'm going to click on this option connector but click on the drop down and then select the connector with the arrow it's got a little arrow on the end because we want to show directional information so let's click here um, let's click on that option click here on the right hand side and then drag and drop it into the top here and it will connect like this then if you move website the connector moves with it like this and I think this is one of the best features of uh, LibreOffice is this drawing diagrams I use this so often in website projects especially when they're quite complex so our, our website visitor is going to come and visit the website and we want to divert that person to let's see the connectors again here we want to divert them to this form processing here so we're going to connect them like this right the website visitor will come from the internet go and visit the website and then he'll go to this form processing now the website visitor I may add another piece of information here so I'm going to copy this website visitor select it copy it paste it and um, we can left click and drag over and select all of these and drag them as one unit or one element so this top one here I want to type in PPC and then I'm going to press Control C and Control V to copy that one and drag it to the side. And in this one, I'm going to type in newsletter. So really what I'm trying to show here, let's make these unbold, is where the traffic's coming from. Where is our source of information? So 
visitors will be coming from pay-per-click and they'll also be coming from um, the newsletter so pay-per-click in a newsletter will generate website visitors who will come and visit the website and we're going to divert them so they're going to read about whatever it is and we're going to send them to this uh, form processing so let's center that out sometimes i like to center things underneath like this but you can see the connectors kind of wrapping around so what we can do is just click on this connector here and then click on the little orange dot and drag it to the bottom here that way it will connect straight to the bottom and that just makes life a little it just looks a bit more presentable right something like this now lots of times people will fill out forms but they'll make mistakes and they'll fill out a form and they'll get their phone number wrong or they'll get their email address wrong or their address their, their trading address or whatever it might be so we'll copy this form processing or well, let's copy um let's see yeah we'll, co we'll, we'll set form processing press Control c and Control v to paste it and over here we're going to make this font a little bit smaller set it to around 14 and we'll make this box a little bit smaller as well it's a little bit big and inside here we're going to type in phone uh, phone api and then we'll select that we'll change its color to something like green and then we'll select it again press ctrl c and ctrl v and we can use the shift key and the down arrow to move the um the boxes and we can also just use the arrows on their own to move them on smaller increments and we'll double click inside here and we'll type in uh, phone so we've got email api so let's go back to our connectors here we'll click that connector and we'll connect it to the form processing here and then we'll do the same for the other one the uh, email here so what are these these APIs these APIs I use them for validating phone numbers and email addresses so when a customer comes along and fills out a form that I've built for a client website before that form gets fully submitted we send the data to an API and the API checks whether that email address is valid or whether the phone number is valid <coughs> of course before we send it we do some basic form processing uh, so we check to make sure that the email um, is a valid structure it has an at sign in it and there's no spaces for example and we make sure the phone number has at least 11 digits as long as it fulfills that criteria then we send it over to this api to get it validated and if it comes back valid then we just send the data on if it doesn't then we flag that to the user to say look you've made a mistake in your phone number or you've made a mistake in your email address and they may, they may not have done that intentionally it might be just an accident when they're typing in and then at least we can get them to fill that out again and complete the process properly so when we get to form processing we'll press ctrl c and ctrl v and we'll bring it down i'm using the mass uh, the, the shift key and the arrows on my keyboard to move it down and we'll connect it again one more time just go to the connector and connect it to here and form processing we're going to do data capture so we'll capture this information so everything's successful so far we'll capture the data now that we have the data in a database somewhere or we've stored that information we can then send it somewhere so let's move it over to here and let's make this a bit smaller and we'll have some sort of send lead right so we can consider this to be a lead it's a potential customer that's filled out a form so we call that a lead in, in web tech or general general marketing we're going to call that a lead a valid lead and we want to send that lead to our customer or to a buyer whoever's going to buy that lead or to the website owner he wants that lead so you can call the customer and find out exactly what they need and give them a quote so let's save that um, normally in this sort of workflow process there's quite a few different uh, other tools that might be being used right so one of them is if we copy the data capture again control c control v and we'll move it down after when we send the lead normally we have to do something called um post back so what is post back Let's connect it first. So what tends to happen is when you're doing newsletters or pay-per-click marketing or some sort of advertising, uh, the, the website visit will come through and then they'll hit this thank you page, right? They'll fill in a form, will capture the data and then normally go to something called a thank you page. And on that thank you page, it says, thank you for contacting us, we'll contact you shortly. But when the user hits that thank you page, we might put a Google tracking pixel there 
and then Google in your pay-per-click uh, control panel for Google advertising you'll see that the customer went through that total journey and then that post back will fire a pixel to say that that's one successful customer that you've generated or at least generated that lead and the same thing applies to newsletters when you send that newsletter to customers so if you're using MailChimp or something like that you can put uh, a pixel on your uh, thank you page after the customer fills out the form you can send a signal back to some sort of mail client or some sort of mail service to say that this uh, this action was completed the customer completed the full journey so consider that to be one valid uh, lead so that's how we do a lot of tracking in web we want to make sure what we're spending on pay-per-click advertising or what we're spending on um, newsletter distribution or whatever costs we have involved in our marketing we want to be able to go back and confirm that we're um, spending our money wisely, let's say. Yeah. So let's save this. So here you can see a basic workflow diagram. Normally this will be, a, a, to be fair, a bit more complex. Um, and normally something like this, I wouldn't do a diagram for it. It just it doesn't make sense because it's such a small sort of workflow. But even when it's a small workflow like this, um, Sometimes I'll do this, even though I can understand this and memorize this workflow, no problem. I don't expect my customer to understand this. So when I put this down on paper like this uh, and send it to them as a PDF file, so let's save this. And here you can see PDF, right? So let's export it as a PDF and just click export. Uh, we'll go to my desktop. Let's go to my desktop. Let's go into this folder and we're going to just save this file here for now we're going to close this software down we don't really need to show you anymore but you've got the general gist of it right so in fact we won't close it we'll leave it open so when i send this to my customer um, i will normally send it as a pdf so let's minimize this open this folder now i've got this whole workflow diagram as a pdf file so my customer can't really edit this but they can view it they can print it and when i pick up the phone and call them i say to them look this is just the the general workflow and they may ask me what is a phone number api what is an email api i don't understand what they are and at least i can show them in the diagram how they're connected within the workflow environment they're connected to the form process and they serve a purpose this lead is sent to you when the when the data is captured and you've got this post back they may not understand what the post back is but if i document it in this basic diagram then at least I can answer all those questions while I'm speaking to my client on the phone but if they didn't see this diagram and I said to them there's something called a post back there's something called send lead there's data capture form processing there's APIs and all this stuff it's going to be much harder for them to understand or visualize what's going on so that's how workflow diagrams can really help also this helps me when I'm working with my developers so I've got I've got a graphic designer I've got a software program I do mainly project management so when I'm sending them information, if they see what the customer sees, all of, I don't really have to re-explain it to them. They already understand this workflow. But if there's some extra elements inside of there, maybe there was another API in here for address validation. You know, sometimes you go to websites and they'll ask you to fill out a form and they'll ask you to put in your postcode. And after you put in your postcode, you can click click a button and it will go and find all of the uh, addresses with that particular postcode. You select that, you select your address from a list we call that um, postcode, uh, what is it called? Postcode lookup. So there might have been another one here called postcode lookup and maybe my developers haven't used that yet. So at least I can explain to that, explain that to them and put it in a diagram. Um, once I've created this diagram and my customer's seen it and they understand everything, then I'll go through and do a detailed specification. So this is not really a specification. This is just a workflow diagram. And normally I'll go through and do a proper specification for the project. But this helps me to visualize it. When I'm working on really, really big, complex projects, you can imagine there might be like 30 of these boxes to, to build a bigger project with much more complex workflow. And this helps to break it down. You can even have separate pages for separate elements of the workflow and then you can document it that way. It's a lot easier to digest the information in your own mind, but also for your customers and your developers. This logic you can apply to many different concepts. So this could be a workflow for maybe an event, right? So people come to the event via some sort of marketing form. Here's some event visitors and they get to the event and then you sign them in and you take some payments from them or something like this and then you introduce them to some next person who takes them off and you do some sort of presentation to them and then at the end um i don't know you give them a goodie bag or whatever it might be right so there might be some workflow to a presentation that you want to document 
or anything in your business could be a workflow for a recipe you just got to open up your mind and see how useful this can be to your business okay so let's go back to the software that's just a basic workflow diagram you can go and experiment with the rest of these tools i'll be honest with you i hardly ever use them it's really just a square box there are some other shapes in here that you might find useful um but for me the square rectangle type in what you want and then i try and isolate different elements in different colors so then it's just not one big flat color then you can see things a little bit more clearly but that's pretty much how i use this software let's save this let's close this we'll close down this pdf and that's the end of this tutorial and i look forward to seeing you in the next dcp web tutorial Thank you.